one of the first requirement for self organization organizing networks is self configuration configuration lies at the heart of optimization for uh, faults that is reducing faults improving the performance having better account and audit of the network and to keep the system secure self configuration is something that is at the essence of uh, self organization we'll see how the requirement for self configuration was um, understood and we'll look at an interesting scenario of commissioning and radio configuration um at times when um certain telecom operator is providing services to certain user base with increasing market size with changing customer requirements there's a need to either roll out new network elements or provide changes to the network elements this would entail a replanning and a reconfiguration uh, because planning and deployment go hand in hand the problem becomes very complicated because the number of network elements at the uh, base stations uh, is a very important uh, entity which is central to the network design so uh, if some change is required at the network element um it would incur a lot of cost if it is not automated um for lte that is long term evolution starting from 3g literally to 4g 5g and 6g now the number of cells have been increasing continuously and the size of the cell has been reducing the uh, commercially off the shelf equipment is now being incorporated from the provider side to bring the costs low so it means that uh, uh, it, it it is becoming very hard to provide manual configuration add to this um the central um uh, o and o a and m activities that is optimization administration and management uh, of uh, uh, the operations administration and management uh, if it is done centrally it means the overall control for security was consistent but now that the network elements are uh, uh, being uh, um, installed in diverse numbers with diverse range of um, variety in hardware and software so security becomes a concern so self configuration now has to incorporate um security as a default feature as well let's look at a scenario where um base station has to be installed in in a certain network proximity base station in pure uh, 2g jargon talks to the um uh, base station uh, controller but in uh, 3g 4g and beyond the network elements have been rebranded but essentially the concept remains the same if a certain base station has to be deployed it means it's a new network network element it has to be in uh, installed and restart and started with minimum human intervention um for that the self configuration dictates an interesting observation that is in the preparation or planning phase or in the roll out or deployment phase these two phases were connected or were placed in tandem but now the operators and the manufacturers joined their hands to eliminate the interaction between the two and uh, merged these two into one self configuration activity now the network element once bootstrapped has minimal off the shelf configuration which is available in it on some ee ee prom um which 
uh, contains the default operator settings. Once the uh, network element is placed on site, it's part of an understanding between the manufacturer and the operator. To uh, allow the network element uh, to map to the existing operator um, um, settings. This leads to uh, independent um, uh, commissioning which involves uh, um, a mix of uh, planning and deployment. In this uh, figure, it has been taken uh, by Professor Seppo Hamelenen uh, from an IEEE paper again. Uh, it was published uh, in 2000, uh, uh, 2007. In here, the classical phases, which were more of silos, if you may call them, uh, included preparation at the factory level, then on-site installation using field engineers, then on-site commissioning by the software engineer. Uh, now, these steps have been obviated by using software. So, auto configuration or self configuration essentially implies that uh, the moment a uh, BTS uh, or a gateway uh, base station is uh, installed in a certain network, um, using some kind of uh, dynamic host configuration protocol or its variant like uh, uh, auto configuration. Um, the device will have some policy that it will implement because uh, uh, the device is aware of the workflow ex execution and its exact state when it has to trigger the interaction with some uh, some uh, network network device. So we see that uh, uh, we achieve uh, automatic uh, connectivity upon commissioning. So uh, where is the uh, human element then? The human element has been obviated and you can see in this diagram in the box below that uh, the uh, auto configuration uh, allows to gain the ease in terms of time, in terms of uh, uh, the human resource required and in terms of errors that humans would make in such complex things. So the gain or flexibility gain was achieved and uh, we see that the overall uh, rollout time uh, essentially improves. From the operator perspective, uh, the uh, device is ready to use on the fly. From the vendor perspective, it doesn't have to send its own field engineers and software engineers to, to meet the requirements of the operator. Let's look at uh, another interesting scenario uh, where we are interested in radio configuration. Radio configuration implies adjustment of radio parameters like transmit power, uh, SINR, signal to interference noise ratio adjustment, uh, the thresholding of key parameters. Um, so uh, once we are done with the um, connectivity uh, after commissioning, so it complements uh, this radio configuration, complements the configuration parameters used for commissioning. Um, which is part of the um, firmware uh, which was downloaded in the um, commissioning phase. So what happens is the radio configuration parameters are, uh, are prescribed as at some default value or some kind of negotiation even can take place between the base station or the base transceiver with the base station controller or home in node B talking to the um, media gateway or the higher entity in uh, 3G and beyond networks. Though the network elements adapts the configuration parameters to current state of network deployment, making it more suitable to adjust to the changing channel uh, behavior. We see that the design, build, operate and maintain states that we know are very much part of any life cycle um, of uh, a network. We are already through with um, auto connectivity and security setup. Uh, auto commissioning was also done. But in dynamic radio configuration phase, um, the device uh, adjusts to the uh, network conditions and the channel um, model. And it always uh, it, it goes through a continuous um, monitoring 
and reporting mechanism to optimize its behavior and if there is an error to to heal itself uh, this means that uh, uh, these use cases dictate some kind of automated behavior where human involvement is not there so this is um, what we call plug and play as well the reference is uh, sepo hemelenen um, a long term evolution self organizing network 